Yes, guys, turn to the 17th question. Read through. Now we'll see a special adjustment, guys, here. Till now we have been seeing final dividends. There is something called as an interim dividend. What is an interim dividend? Interim dividend is a dividend paid for the year in between of the year. Normally, dividend is paid at the end of the year. After you identify the net profit, board of directors will sit. They will decide. They will propose a, a you know, dividend. And we will go to the AGM. In the AGM, everyone starts voting. And then the dividend resolution is passed. Then the dividend is paid within 30 days from the date when which the resolution is passed. This is final dividend. But interim dividend concept is slightly different. What happens is the year dividend is paid in between of the year itself. So when I'm saying that, let's say I have, I have said I have paid dividend after two quarters. Okay, I have paid dividend at the rate of 10% for two quarters. What does it indicate? Am I, am I paying the dividend for six months? It's a full year dividend which is paid in between of the year. So it cannot be considered as six months dividend. It is one year dividend. Dividend cannot be paid on a six months basis. Dividend is for one financial year. Financial year can be 12 months, 15 months, 18 months, whatever it is. One financial year dividend is paid, but I am paying in between of the year. It is a full year dividend, but I am paying in between of the year. So I'll call it by name interim dividend instead of calling it as final dividend. So read through the question. ABC, there's a reserve and a PNL and there is intercompany balances. Check intercompany balances. A limited on the liability side in B limited and C limited is 10,000, 8,000. Asset side in A limited column, B and C 12,000, 8,000. 8,000, 8,000 straightforward cancel. The 12,000 and 10,000 when you get cancel, you get 2,000 rupees of cash in transit. Next, come to your investments. A and B, B and C, no, A and B, A and C and B and C. So again, chain of links. All the shares were purchased on 1st July 2011. Guys, current financial year is 2011 only. You are buying on 1st July 2011 exactly 6 months. Next, on 1st Jan 2011, the following balance are given to you. That is 1st Jan balance. So if I am given the 1st Jan balance, I can identify what is current year profits and half of the current year profits is pre, half is post. Profits of 2011 are earned evenly throughout the year. In August 2011, each company declared and paid an interim dividend of 10% per annum for 6 months. As 10% per annum for 6 months is nothing but 5% dividend paid. So 5% dividend is paid in the month of August. So even these shareholders will also receive the dividend. Half of the dividend is pre-acquisition, half is post. A and B have credited the dividend to their P&L accounts for the dividend received. In 2011, C fabricated a machine costing 10,000 which was sold to B for 12,000. B then sold it to A for 13,000. So there's a two intercompany transactions. The first intercompany can transaction is C to B. This is again upstream transaction. C to B, 1000 no, 2,000 rupees profit and B to A, 1,000 rupees profit. There's no depreciation percentage is given. So unrealized profit direct. Directly you can take it as 2,000 and 1,000. 2000 I'll deduct it from C limited column, 1000 I'll deduct it from B limited column when I'm doing analysis of reserves. Other than that, there's nothing in the question. Directly consolidated balance sheet. So a simple problem with a new adjustment that is interim dividend. So start with your cost of acquisition and your shareholding patterns. Cost of acquisition or date of acquisition is 1-7-2011. Shareholding pattern. Number of shares held and percentage holding. First in C. In C, A holds 100 shares, B holds 350 shares. A, B and minority. Uh, 
हंड्रेड थ्री फिफ्टी आई डोट नो टोटल टोटल चेक योर शेयर कैपिटल ईच शेयर इज हंड्रेड रुपीज सिक्सटी थाउजेंड सो आर सिक्स हंड्रेड शेयर दिस वन फिफ्टी देन दिस वन बाई सिक्स दिस इज सेवन बाई ट्वेल्व एंड दिस इज वन बाई फोर वन बाई फोर कैन बी रिटर्न एज ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट देन बी लिमिटेड ए होल सेवन फिफ्टी शेयर्स टोटल शेयर्स आर थाउजेंड Analysis with reserve, with respect to date of acquisition, that is one seven two thousand eleven. I'll start with the indirect subsidiary first, that is C Limited. I don't have to touch reserve because there is no adjustment to reserve. The adjustment is there only with the P&L. Balance sheet date balance of C Limited P&L is twenty five thousand. Balance is on first Jan. This is given to you. First Jan two thousand eleven balance of P&L is three thousand. So you have twenty-five thousand as the current year P&L at the closing, and I have three thousand rupees opening balance of P&L. That means my current year profit is twenty-two thousand three hundred and fifty. Guys, this current year profit is after interim dividend. You already deducted interim dividend. Interim dividend is already paid in the month of August. That means interim dividend is already paid. I don't have to deduct again. So it is already deducted. If something is given in the month of August, it is paid in the month of August. That means the amount is already deducted from the amount of twenty-five thousand. So this twenty-two thousand which you get in the current year profit is after your interim dividend. Now there is one adjustment for C Limited that is unrealized profit. Should I deduct twenty-two thousand minus unrealized profit? Boy, we have to deduct only those unrealized profits from post acquisition reserve. So what do we do first? First split. Up to first July, eleven thousand. First July to thirty first December, this is eleven thousand. From here, unrealized profit you deduct two thousand rupees unrealized profit when he sold that equipment to B. Fourteen thousand is pre-acquisition, nine thousand is post-acquisition. Fourteen thousand is pre and nine thousand is post-acquisition. Fourteen plus three is only twenty-three. No problem. Two thousand rupees unrealized profit is there. Then come to the analysis for B Limited. Again under B Limited, again I have a P&L. Balance is on 31st December 2011. Check. P&L balance sheet balance is 30,000. Balance is on 1st April, 1st Jan 2011. Opening balance of P&L is minus 5,000. 
negative debit balance. So my current year profit, this is after the dividend, interim dividend guys, 35. First let me split. Up to 1st Jan is 17500. From 1st Jan to 31st December is again 17500. From here I have unrealized profit adjustment. Unrealized profit adjustment is 1000 rupees. There is one more adjustment. One more adjustment for B Limited is the dividend from C Limited. So whatever dividend I received from C Limited, half is pre-acquisition, half is post-acquisition. Even though it is interim dividend, what did we say? Such interim dividend is basically a <coughs> dividend which is paid for the entire year. If I am acquiring on 1-7-2011, that means it has a portion of pre-acquisition, also it has a portion of post-acquisition. Post-acquisition dividend take it to P&L, perfect. But pre-acquisition cannot be taken to P&L. So from the pre-acquisition, that is 1-7 part, from here deduct pre-acquisition dividend. Pre-acquisition dividend from C. Calculate guys. B limited and C limited holds 350 shares. Each share is 100 rupees. He is paying 5%. 6 by 12. Guys, 5, 5%. He clearly said it is 10% per annum for 6 months. So if it is 10% per annum for 6 months, then he is paying only 5% dividend. Out of 5% dividend received, half is pre-acquisition, half is post-acquisition. The entire dividend is credited to P&L. Automatically, my P&L is increased to the extent of dividend. So, half of the dividend, I am deducting it from pre-acquisition profits. We will take this to cost of control. Amount is? Okay. 875 rupees of profit. So this should be 16,625. Let me combine guys. This will become 11,625 rupees. This 11,625 is completely pre-acquisition. Information sufficient for distribution of reserves. First distribute for indirect subsidiary C limited. Check reserve. B limited reserve in the sorry C limited reserve in the balance sheet is seven thousand five hundred. Balance at the beginning of the year is five thousand. So current year appropriation is two five double zero. Date of acquisition is one seven. That means six months is pre. So out of two thousand five hundred, I'll say twelve fifty is pre acquisition, twelve fifty is post acquisition. So the total is basically fifteen thousand sorry seven thousand five hundred. So we get like this six two five zero. 1250. 5000 already existing as on 1st Jan plus 1250 rupees at current year 6 months appropriation. PNL I don't have so much, I already have the figures. We can just blindly post this amounts 14,000 and 9,000. Oh, this is 20250, 1250, 9,000. Split. Or distribute to A, B, minority. A, 1 by 6. B, 7 by 12. 
minority 1 by 4 1 by 6 is 3 3 7 5 1 by 4, 5, 0, 6, 2.5. This is 11,000. I'm saying get this figure, guys. As if you want, you can round it off, guys, to make it look better. So the figures. You can round it off then guys, to make it look better, you can round it off, no problem. Even if you round it off, I don't mind. 0.5 is at least round off the 1 to the other digit. I'm just rounding this off. Yes, guys. Now go for distribution of B limited. Pre acquisition and post acquisition. Post acquisition again, I have a reserve column and a penal column. First one check, B limited reserves, B limited reserve balance sheet is 10, B limited check your PNL column, sorry your first January column, 10, 10,000 is already there, so there is no post. Sixteen six twenty five and sixteen five hundred. But do not forget you have share in post acquisition reserves of C. Share in post acquisition reserves of C seven twenty nine and five two five zero. Twenty one six twenty five seven twenty nine and twenty one thousand seven fifty. Distribute between A and minority seventy five twenty five again. Seventy five twenty five.
check the distribution values once you get the distribution you can start your cost of control minority interest and reserves for CBS When you are doing your cost of investment, do not forget to take pre-acquisition dividend. I have three investments. The first one is A and B. Second one is B and C. No, A and C. And then I will take B and C. Start with your cost of investment. Reduced by Pre-acquisition dividend. A and B. Cost of investments are 90,000. 15,000. And 52,000. Pre-acquisition dividend from B. They are paying 5% dividend. They are paying 5% dividend. How many shares does A hold in B? 750 shares. Each share is 100 rupees. They are getting 5% 5, 5 dividend. So 5 rupees per share. 750 shares into 5 rupees. 6 months dividend. 6 months will be considered as the pre-acquisition part. 
think it is 18750 1875 next one huh? ANC 100 shares 5% 500 500 dividend half of it 250 this pre-acquisition this already I calculated as 875 we already calculated it here net cost is 88,125 14,750 51,125 compare it with share in net assets share in net assets are represented by share capital and pre-acquisition reserve Each share is 100 rupees. Come on, so A and B 7,575,000 7, shares. A and C 100 shares, 10,000. B and C 350 shares, 35,000. Pre acquisition A and B 16,219. A and C, B and C 3375. And 7. And double one eight one three total is ninety one thousand two one nine thirteen thousand three seventy five and this is forty six thousand eight one three first case I have a capital reserve of three thousand 094 second case I have a goodwill second one goodwill is 1375 last case also goodwill 5000 it's 4000 4,312 net we get goodwill guys net goodwill is net goodwill of 2593 minority interest next in B and in C start with his share in share capital then I'll add his share in the reserves under reserves we take pre acquisition as well as post acquisition under the post acquisition column we have two parts post acquisition reserve and post acquisition p and l that's it that will give you the total balance Check share capital. Minority in B is 250. Each share is 100 rupees, 25,000. In C is 150, 15,000. Pre acquisition uh, reserves in B add everything 5406, 182, 5438. In C, 5062, 313, 2250. This is 20,000, 625, and this is 35,000. 36,000 this is 0 to 
जीरो टू सिक्स टोटल इज फिफ्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड सिक्स फिफ्टी वन This is for CBS. The last working note: two columns, reserve and P&L. Start with the limited balance, then add a share in post-acquisition reserves. post acquisition reserves from b and c finally pre acquisition dividend wrongly created to pnl wrong treatment of pre acquisition dividend that to both in b and c a limited balance of reserves 20000 and 50000 Share in post acquisition reserves of B five four seven sixteen three one two. In C two not eight fifteen hundred. Pre acquisition dividend wrongly credited to P and L eighteen seventy five and two fifty. This one is two zero seven five five. Reserve and my P and L is sixty six thirty seven six five six eight seven. Complete the balance sheet, guys. You have all the figures now.
Yes guys, let's start the consolidated balance sheet. Consolidated balance sheet of A Limited as on 31st December 2011. Starting with equity and liabilities. Shareholder funds. Share capital. Equity share capital being one lakh fifty thousand. Reserves and surplus. There's no capital reserve. Directly go for your reserves for CBS. One reserve and a PL existing there. 20,755 and 65,687. Then I have minority interest 58,651. Non current liabilities are zero. I only have current liabilities and under current liabilities we have credit us 60,000 assets non current assets Tangible assets. Tangible fixed assets. We need to reduce 3000 rupees for unrealized profit. That is not unrealized profit on stock. It is an equipment which should form part of your fixed assets. 1,77,000. 3000 reduced. Intangible assets already existing in the balance sheet goodwill is 45. 45 plus new goodwill of 2,517, 593, 47,593. That's it. No other non-current assets. Directly current assets. Only one broad heading of current assets. Along with that, I have a cash in transit. Current assets are 25 plus 58 plus 45, 500. This total should be giving me about 1,28,500. And my cash in transit being 2,000. Much? Zero one? Zero nine three. Nine three. The balance sheet should tally guys there. Uh, 